hope you can hear me and see me okay. Um, I wasn't planning on bringing a video but quite as soon as I, I am because I thought, oh, I haven't got enough to show you. Um, but I've had a delivery this morning and I'll explain why I want to share this now. Um, but actually, when I've gone and grabbed a load of things together, I thought, actually, I've got a lot to show you. I think that's probably why my videos are so long because what I end up doing is thinking, oh, wait till I've got all these things and then I've just got too much. So maybe me thinking I haven't got enough is probably the best thing. So the reason um, I've done this now instead of waiting is the it's an unboxing ritual. Now, I did this a month ago. It's the same so Hayley Jane box and I did that just because I when I emailed Hayley I said that I'd do it but it turns out when you do it you're actually um, you're in in a competition to win uh, a 15 pound voucher from the fold line um, I've not purchased anything from the fold line I'm gonna look in, look into them a little more but um so yes yeah, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do this even if say if I won this time um, I'm not going to stop sharing it. I think I'm still going to continue sharing my unboxing ritual every month. That's if, you know, you object, you know, severely. Because uh, I think it's a nice way for me to uh, remember what I got in each box. And I can kind of sometimes look back on my videos and think, oh, what did I get? And make sure I'm using what I've been sent. So, um... I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping I don't start coughing and spluttering. Uh, if you've been watching all my previous videos, I've had a virus for quite a while and, and I've really been trying to hold it together. Um, I've got a drink ready, I've got my sewing related tissues ready, so uh, uh, my throat gets quite dry and I, ha I have got a bit of pain in my chest, but I'm, I've been carrying on, I'm soldiering on as normal, so uh, let's just see how it goes. So um, I'm gonna do the unboxing in a moment. And I'll just uh, tell you what's going on. Um, I, if you have been watching the needle punching, I haven't, I haven't done any more needle punching. However, it's in it's uh, in mind. Uh, a friend of mine left me some Ada, um, a local sewing shop, out the back for me. So I should have plenty to have a go and have a go with. I know it's not what you usually use, but um, I've used it and, and I've been okay with it. So, uh, and this is quite firm. It's, this I'd say is totally man-made. Um, it doesn't feel like it's got any natural fibres. So if, if you're watching Mansi, thank you very much. I went to collect it. And um, uh, it was funny because, um, you know, the shop owner, she, uh, Anna, she said, I wondered where that had come from. So I thought, I thought, I thought Mandy had told you. So she can't remember if he did tell her, but she had forgot. So she thought, didn't know where it had come from. So it's a good job she didn't sell it, isn't it, really? <laughs> but I've got it, so thank you, Mandy. Uh, needle punching again. When I was looking to all the needle punching not that long ago, um, I, I found a, a size 10 punch needle that I really wanted that isn't adjustable and uh, it was on the wool warehouse and uh, it was out of stock but it said if you want to know when it's in stock um you know uh, click here or whatever and we'll email you and uh, and last night it said it's in stock so uh, I've ordered it so I won't probably do any needle punching now um, until that arrives and I'm still um, I, d I still don't think I've got the yarn I'm probably gonna need I don't I don't know I need to have a real good look around and see what I've got so I'm, pr I'm I am still keen on doing that but I know I haven't mentioned it as much um, so what what else did I want to tell you I, I have um, I did tell you in my last video that I'd ordered a crochet book I think that was near the end from what I can remember and the book came now this is a designer uh, that um, I've admired from afar um, she basically it's it's crochet toys and um, and, and, and uh, if you follow me on Facebook especially you'll have seen I've knitted and crocheted a lot of toys you know my boys are growing up but you know they they all still appreciate the odd thing of their taste you know like a, a, a doll that's made of uh, oh gosh what was that it's because I've been moving oops right it's um it's because I've got a couple of I've got one of my old Easter chicks out and uh, and it was out of a box up there and the lid and the lid from something else has just fell off because it's because I've been interfering with it so I haven't got pulled to geist uh, it's because I haven't done a good job of putting those back so the, um, at the time when this designer came around got round, I really admired the toys but I just wasn't in that frame of mind to be making any crochet toys uh, you know some you know sometimes I'll see something 
uh, and I think, oh gosh, I forgot to make it. So anyway, I saw this book quite some time ago. I can't remember the release date. And then, um, and it was on uh, Chanda uh, ch a channel um, recently, and there was, a, and they had the some of them in the in the flesh. Well, you know, in the yarn, but they had them there. And I just fell in love and I thought I've got to do it. And then uh, I do feel a little bit guilty. They said it was 11 day dispatch and I thought I just I can't wait, I can't wait. And what it is, I've got some, uh, I'd really enjoyed knitting with the um, crow, uh, with the cotton yarn from a little fisherman. And, uh, and I'd got bits left and I thought, oh, what? I really would like to make something. So it made sense really. I got this book and, uh, and this is it. It's uh, it's Lala, it's Lally Layla. I think that's how you say it. Beetles, bugs, and butterflies, and the designer is Lydia Tre Treselt. I think I'm not the best at re <laughs> reading, really, but um, that's. And now I'll show you a picture of her. Like I don't know how much of the book I could show you, um, because I don't know how it works really, but. <laughs> that, that's a, that's the designer. Can you see her with a little looking glass? I think she's German, and um, and it's just delight. It's really delightful. So the main character, that basically, it's a story which would be lovely for if you crochet and you've got little people in your life. Um, I do recommend it. There is a bit of a dark bit. Uh, as an adult you think oh gosh you can't help but laugh but it is a bit dark so obviously um, if I'd read it first just because of this little bit of a dark area in it and see what you think if it's suitable for your small child but um, I've started making the main character now I've gone straight to caterpillar the butterfly is the main character and I've done the caterpillar part so um, this is and how she looks now. So she, oh, she's just delightful, isn't she? She's so cute. I hope she looks as cute as she actually is, uh, you know, on film. She's lovely. And basically, to make the wings, you make like a band, and then you um, make the wings. However, um, the band will be the same colour as the dark stripe, but the the wings, I haven't got the uh, the colour, so it's funny. So obviously I was doing this to use up yarn that was left over from a project, and now I've ended up buying more yarn. So it's counterproductive really, isn't it? So I could just see this carrying on now. So I think, oh, I've got a little bit of this to make this one. Um, I think, oh, I'll need to buy some more. So I think I'll end up with a uh, crochet um, cotton collection. However, what I will say is, I was a bit gutted actually, the, uh, my yarn from the Fisherman is DK, double knit, that's the weight, the thickness of it. And these, uh, it suggests that you use four ply, which is thinner than DK, uh, uh, with this certain size hooks, and Aaron with these certain size hooks. So I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll go in the middle, I'll do DK, and I think I used a size um, three, hook which that wasn't suggested for the four ply and that wasn't suggested for the Aaron so I've kind of gone in the middle and that's a, but in all honesty when I saw the chap holding one of the butterflies on a chander um did I actually tell you I did end up buying the book somewhere else and that I chander I'm really sorry I am I am a member of a chander um a freedom member and I buy from you you know regular but uh, this time I did get the book somewhere else because it was going to get to me a bit quicker so um so yes yeah, so this is the, uh, the the what I've got so far so I've got all of the bits of yarn to make her wings and um there's some lovely little characters in it so um you know there's a bottle fly um little, little bugs and uh, there's a late ladybird a beetle a moth so yeah, they're really, they're really delightful. I'm, I know you think, oh gosh, I'm a grown woman, I've got all boys. But sometimes I think you've just got to do something cute, haven't you? Well, I do. I, I do anyway. So I've got that going on. And actually, uh, in it, 
that is a, um, a metal purse, there's a pattern that fits in a metal purse frame, like sewers should be quite familiar with those as well. And it actually makes a Venus fly trap, a bit dark isn't it? But it may, and, and I'm, um, and I'm going to make it, I've decided I'm going to make the Venus fly trap as well. And, uh, and it actually shows you can put your crochet hooks in, so whether I'll keep crochet hooks in mine I don't know, but that's, that's something that's going on at the moment. I best not put that on there because um that unboxing that i'm doing so i'll probably pop them down there um delivery that's arrived today now do you know i told you that i'd ordered another sewing themed mug and it's uh, it's the john scott mug and actually i know i said oh it's a bit bog standard and boring la di da kind of shape it's the one i'd put crisps in it and it is that kind of shape but it's a bit smaller so it's actually it's nicer than I thought and John I won't be having crisps in it I will be having a coffee so rest assured I apologize but yeah it, do, you know, do you know what I'm saying do you know like a builder's mug is very you know straight up and down you know kind of thing it's not it's not my I like kind of things that have got a bit more like I do like a cook and sauce I like like this one I'm oh, sorry if it's a bit dirty I ordered this off somebody and it's got um a motif I asked for what I wanted on there and it's got like it's more like a teacup isn't it but without the saucer I kind of like a bit more shapely but saying that my poppy tefray that I've got here uh, that's very bog standard shape I suppose isn't it with the print on but I suppose the handle looks a little fancier do you think so uh, so yeah it's not my favorite shape kind of mug but I love it because it's John Scott so I, I love John I've met John a few times and uh, I just love John he he's um was in dressmaking in films and things and I don't think he really does much sewing I don't think he does any sewing now in all honesty but he was good good as a presenter on the sewing quarter and he's got a new venture with um, crafters companion presenting there so good luck to you John so thank you my mug came today and uh, and it came with a signed photograph so thank you very much for that so um so actually if you live local to me you might go to his gym so if you don't look, I'm sorry, John, you're going to get hassled now in, in, in the gym, but that's John Scott. So, you know, go and say hello to him and say, uh, you know, your fan, Claire, say Claire who makes things, because he, he does know me as Claire who makes things. Tell him, say, yeah, I said hi. So, <laughs> so, but he's not my, in my gym. I, I am a member of a gym, but I don't really go, not very often. Uh, now, the sewing street has um, started, it's kind of replaced sewing quarter and I have made two purchases from them since they opened and I've got, what it is, my dressmaking, my main dressmaking scissors from John Lewis have disappeared and I just don't know where, I, I use them cutting out on the hall floor and I just can't find them. So I've ordered another pair of scissors and I've ordered, they were doing these Fiskars large universal scissors, uh, I hope they are meant to be for for uh, fabric but they look like dressmaking scissors and look at the shape of them normally they're quite flat along there for dressmaking so you can go along like that you know what I'm saying and they've got a lovely hard cover on and they're in $9.99 uh, apparently they're an introductory offer I haven't opened those yet and um, because the thing I've cut out in my dressmaking at the minute I've have done with a rotary cutter uh, on my mat so um, I can tell my voice isn't right you know your voice sounds a bit different so that was my first purchase from them and then my second purchase from them is something rather cute I've got quite a grey um, neutral bedroom but we kind of inject a bit of colour with the bed linen and um but I still like it quite grey with a little bit but my husband really loved this bed linen it's really bright and mustard and it is striking and it does kind of go with the room but it doesn't oh, we've had it a while now it's not new but um it doesn't go with the curtains at all really but do you know when you kind of like when you're in a marriage 
uh, you have to compromise, don't you? And I do like the bed linen. It's not, like if I absolutely hated it, I might have gone, please, no, no, no. But sometimes I'm, I'm quite, I try and compromise a lot with my husband. Uh, and it's a, it's a success, isn't it, to marriage, I suppose. And uh, so, yeah, I, I let him have the bed linen. So we end up with a lot more yellow in it than I, I wanted, really. Well, I don't mind a lot of yellow mustard yet. I love it. I really love that colour. But it's just that it doesn't go with the curtains. But as long as you don't kind of look at the curtains and the bed at the same time, it's not too bad. So actually, um, I bought this little something to go next to my bed because we're under renovations at the moment. We we haven't really got a living room space so um so we do end up spending a lot of time in the kitchen and the bedroom so i do end up sort of, sort of crafting on the bed so i bought this and i thought it just looks really decorative and i am mad about bees i love insects well obviously those crochet things are insects so uh, yeah there's all these little things on it it's like i could probably make something like this but uh, it's, it was a really nice buying gift. It's all got this embroidery on it as well. So, and it and it reminded me I've embroidered bees um, onto my linen apron that I made, and I love it. I, love, I must admit, it's the Machana Claire one. I don't, I don't wear it. It's just so gorgeous. I just don't want to mess it up. And actually, my dress form that I did make, my one that's too big that I mentioned last time, she's in here. And um, and she was wearing my apron because the apron really is quite big for me because um, it was the smallest. It's a shame really because they do a kid size and they do adults, but the kids only go to about size ten, so it's not like I can do the kid size. But if I ever made that apron again, I'd probably just try and reduce it myself and get a smaller one and maybe a little bit shorter, so it only went a little bit past the pocket area in length, and I'd probably wear it more then as well because it, obviously it's quite a big thing so it's more of a, a decorative piece and it's actually I think it's the only Jan even though I love Janet Clare it's the only and I've got her books um and and it's and I've I have bought the odd little thing that I haven't made yet and I've got the spoon drift quilt I'm doing so it's kind of like I'm a fan but the mate the making hasn't begun it's only the apron and I've like followed her for years and and uh, so I really want to I like tagging the designers in things I've made and I sometimes I feel like a bit guilty that I'm always chatting on a thing you know like, and then I'm not making the things but I, I will it just my time will come kind of thing so my fruit oh it's killing I'll just have a sip of this it just gets you know it's just it's got not no lubrication it's so dry that's cold now but at least it's okay so anyway so it's basically really decorative in my bedroom goes lovely with the bed linen that i didn't plan however the bed linen i did choose that's mainly gray with a hint of mustard it's got butterflies and insect themes so this goes lovely anyway watch this you open it and ta-da so it's got all these little things so if i'm sitting crafting in bed and i need something like some little scissors I need a tape measure, a few threads, needle threader, see, seam ripper or quick and pick and a, and a pin cushion in the middle so that will come in really and actually look at this side it's got nothing in that side but it's got a little bee there and I love it so it's something that looks really decorative on my bedside table but it's got all these hidden treasures inside so that's my second budget and I think they've still got those actually and I think they've still got the scissors so if you you know I'm look I'm not um I don't earn any money from anything that I show you I I currently don't have adverts on my YouTube videos and so I, I'm just a lover of crafts and I do this for the love don't get me wrong um, in the future it'd be lovely if I could earn a living, a living from um, my passion um, but at the moment you know I've got a lot on with my with my own family and everything so this is my little you know release in life kind of thing so that is that I put that down there now the reason I was digging through the Easter things is um, in the past right, I was inspired by another knitter that I know and um, to make she makes these with little cream eggs on 
and I've made that before so I decided I'd make some more so I had that's what I was digging around for to put an egg on and um, and I've made another one one evening but at the minute it hasn't got a face or a beak so it's not very interesting to show you but um, I'm kind of starting to think a little bit about Easter now because it's not that far away is it so um, I'm trying to do all my little Easter crafts actually um, I'm not, I can't actually find it but I've knitted these chicks before where you put the cream egg in the top now I, can't, I think I prefer those because I think if you put them in the top the chick kind of stands up but I find these ones where you pop, the, pop them over the top you can't stand them up they don't they don't want to stand up do they so i've got this little um i don't know what i've got how i got this actually it's smaller than these standard eggs because cream eggs are smaller aren't they but um i've just stood them in there so i'd like to make sure that uh, every member in this house of my family on easter day they've all got a little chick with a cream egg in and if someone doesn't want to eat their cream egg i would gladly it for them because it was quite nice when they were all small Pe people used to buy them cream eggs so instead of oh we got these instead of an easter egg but they didn't like cream eggs but the good thing is that like, me and my husband got to eat them all which is quite nice so so you said um, i am thinking about easter related things um and i finished my knitted hat like if you follow me on instagram or facebook and actually i've posted this on my, i've got a wordpress blog that i really really um neglect um, but I am going to just try and post some things. Sometimes I kind of want to blog about something, but I don't really want it just on my photos kind of thing. So I did a little blog post about um, the problem I was having my wardrobe and, uh, and what I bought and what I was doing. So I put that in there, but I did include the hats as well. So uh, yeah, so I might be posting on that a little bit more. Might. I don't know, I might have left links in previous videos. I'll, I'll look into that again. If I'm really up and coming with that, I'll start putting that. So you might get slightly different things in the blog. Uh, it's kind of like I'll just say how I feel, like, like what I do on here actually. So my hat, uh, here it is. I absolutely love it. And uh, I took a photograph of me wearing my uh, shop bought coat in it and it, and it goes really nice. The only unfortunate thing is that we had we've had such mild milder days since I've knitted it and I've not really fancied wearing a hat and I was determined to make it in time and it's just like I just don't I'm not in the mood for a woolly hat but I do hear that the weather's going to turn again so I might because um, the thing is when you wear a hat your hair really gets messed up so if I put a hat on I kind of want to leave it on until I get home and then take it off because otherwise I'm just all, you know all over the place so um yeah so hopefully i will i've like I've, I've tried it on to to take photographs but i haven't actually wore it out but i did wear um it was my son's oh gosh i'm really struggling to talk to you it was my uh, youngest son's 13th birthday saturday so we had a day in so people could visit and um and then on the Sunday we had a party for him. We, we picked his friends up from the trampoline and had a pizza and things. And actually wore my lovely mustard crochet cardigan. And uh, and actually I I love it so much. I'd be pretty keen to make another one in another colour quite soon. But I've set my heart on um, knitting a couple of things from the Harry Potter knitting book, the new one. I have shown you one here, and um, I was determined. I'm determined to do it, but thing that's holding me back because I want to do Gryffindor that's the house that Harry Potter was in um, and you know you get houses the Slytherin, Hufflepuff, um, Ravenclaw and Gryffindor and Harry Potter was in Gryffindor and I'd really like um, a scarf and a cardigan and I said I really what I envision is for my birthday late this year like for my 40th I'd really love to go to Harry Potter world I have been once before wearing them this is what I kind of envision doing and uh, but the, the thing I keep looking on shops on yarn shops the trouble is 
they're, they're certain colours and I don't want to get the colours wrong so if there's any knitters watching this and, you, and, and what it is, I, I don't just want any old acrylic, right? I want something lovely, really lovely to knit with. Um, so if you think you know a yarn and it's got to be Aran weight, so I need a charcoal Aran for the cardigan, but I need, and for the scarf is Aran as well, Aran weight, but I really need um, the right colours. So if you know something that's got a nice, um, you know, a nice, a nice kind of wool, um, you know, a nice yarn uh, and a good composition, something really luxury. Um, please let me know. Uh, I might have to phone pl around places and see what they can advise. So uh, if it wasn't for that kind of hanging over me, I probably would make an, a start and uh, start another cardigan, the same one in another colour. And if uh, if you know me well, my husband goes, "You never make the same thing twice, do you?" But actually, uh, if it's something to wear and you can, and you love it and you have another colour, then yeah, you know. So that's that. Now. Another thing I'm getting involved with is uh, a blog hop, right? A YouTube blog hop. I think this is going to happen. I've said yes, I'll do it, and I've just got to give them the date. Now, the blog hop, uh, what you, what I believe goes on is that they'll you'll do a video and uh, and other YouTubers do a video, and it's about the same kind of theme. And you basically, you'll be put on this person who's arranged it playlist. So people that follow them will kind of flick through all the other people. You might, like I might gain a few more like followers from it. And they'll be dre they would be dressmaking people. And um, so uh, I, I think I'm getting involved with that. And, and it's a so fearless hop, it's called. And, um, and it's about trying to push yourself out of your comfort zone and sew something that you wouldn't really want to normally do now i don't i don't know if you kind of know what what i'm like really but nothing when it comes to crafting i don't re i'm not really fearful of anything if i really want something i will have a good go so as it happens i'd started making something um, when i heard about this uh, blog hop that is a bit different to what i normally make and it is dressmaking so i thought you know what I've, uh, I'm making this, I've started it. So do you know what? I could enter that into this blog hop. So it might be my next video is this blog hop. Um, so whether I'll have other things made or it's just this thing made, I don't know yet. Um, but I need to basically get cracking. And I think I, sh I think for the blog hop, I should have made it and say what happened. But anyway, I did tell you that I'm sure I told you last time I was making the Fifi pyjama camisole set. And, uh, and what is different about this to other garments I've made? Even though I've cut fabric on the bias... Um, like I try and speak to people in layman's terms often in my videos. Obviously dressmakers usually know this but when you get fabric you get two ends and that's where it's on the machine and they're called the salvage ends and then the fabric will go on a, the, up that way so you've got the two salvage ends it will go on a very long way where it comes off the bolt and it gets folded in half salvage and salvage and wrapped round and round and round and usually when you cut garments you cut them so your salvage so say if you were cutting a skirt the salvage is here and here and you cut the skirt there or a top so so you cut down the long bit but um when you're cutting the bias you're cutting diagonal now you cut on the diagonal when you're making things like bias binding do you know when you make the binding that goes all round things on a, like if you make binding and it's going to be straight you don't need to cut it on the bias you can cut straight binding but this is basically um you know what was i saying sorry a, a notification has come up on my phone then and it kind of threw me off course it did i thought what is that it's saying something about your child is old enough to have their own Fitbit account now or something, but I, I don't use a Fitbit anymore. I haven't haven't used it since I've had an Apple Watch, so I don't, I don't know. So maybe it's just back from back then, so I don't know. So anyway, so I've, I've cut things on the bias edge, you know, things with quilts, and I've cut bias binding, and I've cut, I've cut toys out, and you're working on the bias and whatever, but I've never made a bias cut 
garments. Now with these Fifi camisole by Tilly and the Buttons, the shorts aren't cut on the bias, they are cut on the straight of grain, that's what they call it. But the top isn't, and the reason you would do that is so it's nice and drapey and flowy. So anyway, I had this fabric that I'm really, oh gosh, my throat, sorry, I feel feel a bit awful actually um this fabric that has been given to me at some point that I don't really like that much I didn't like it enough that I think I'd wear a garment and in all honesty I don't really like it that much for pyjamas but it's a really good idea if you're going to make a garment that's all brand new to you it's a really good idea to make something out of fabric that you're not that keen on so I kind of make make a toile a toile is like a practice garment but I make like a wearable toile so if it turns out okay I could wear it it's to the standard of a wear wearable toile and uh, and that's what I'm working on at the moment and that's what I'm going to do the blog hop so it was it was a little bit tricky actually the cutting um wasn't tricky but when I had to stay stitch the um start stay stitching my fabric was actually puckering and um i've not had that before and i know that's a tension issue so i had actually um had to drop the tension down to two and now i've never worked with tension on my sewing machine that low before and that seemed to work it out and i didn't do this um the stitches too long because that seemed to cause a bit of a problem now so that that sorted that out the only other thing i did make a mistake basically before you attach because there's basically two bosom pieces that go to a body before you attach them to the body you're supposed to hem these bits here and I forgot, because I went away and did other things. I came back and I totally forgot to do it. So I thought, oh, I'll kind of bodge this together because I might not even like it. So I applied bias binding along the front edge. Now, if you look on this, you don't put any bias binding around the neck. The binding is around the back edge and around the straps, but I've got it down this neckline. Um, I haven't finished it yet, actually. So um, this is my other dress form. This, meet my friend. This is that Daisy. And and you might not realise I have got Rafe here, my little sewing companion. He was whimpering. As soon as I started setting up the video, he was whimpering. You know what he's like. So the, this is my Daisy. And um, I must admit, I haven't measured her in a while in comparison to me uh but the, the, i've just left her she stays in my bedroom actually because she's so pretty she looks nice in there my husband doesn't mind her so i leave her there so often when you see the photographs she's actually in my bedroom but this is what i've got so far excuse i've got a crease down the front that's where you cut it on the fold and i did press it quite well actually and i haven't ironed that fold out but um I ha I've, if i wasn't doing this video now i would have been hemming this so I haven't hemmed it yet and um, and this is the binding that I shouldn't have had and I've got to put a bow here the only thing is it I must admit if you do like the binding here I would recommend you still put that binding on before you attach it to the boobs it'd be so much easier having to do this and i've had to do my yin wood curve look, look i've done that before do you know my uh, my fabric nativity um stable that i made that was a lot that was um a lot of outward and inwards binding and um but the only thing is because i was having trouble getting it right you this has got all uh, french seams like if you don't know what french seams are they're enclosed seams so you haven't got any like raw edges on the inside of the garment so so uh, if you have a look, I don't, well, you're not going to be able to see. Basically, nor, not normally with things, you sew things with the pretty sides facing. So then when you open them out, the raw edge is on the, the wrong side, the ugly side. But um, but with this, you do it the opposite round. You put wrong side to wrong side and sew it. You trim about half of that seam allowance down. And then you fold it then um, the opposite way. So then you'd be right side to right side. And then you do another seam line. So, you, so it's like you, you no need for an overlocker or any zigzagging. You've got these beautiful hidden inside seams and that's high but the only time i've ever seen um 
French seams is actually in the Marks and Spencer school shirts. Um, when I've bought school shirts from anywhere else, they've all been overlock seams. But Marks and Spencer's, they're actually French seams. And I've got boys with sensitivity problems. I have sensitivity problems. So actually, it, it's a nice idea. And with a pyjama garment, you want that. So um, now I probably made this a little bit harder for myself because I didn't have then. And like, this is, needs a bow here. I haven't put the bow on yet. I did make a bow and I don't know what I've done with it. Um, so I picked it off because I've made a slight adjustment with this and then I haven't put it back on. I don't know what I've done with it. Um, I didn't have enough of this binding left to do the binding that goes all the way around the back and around the strap. So actually, I don't usually buy bias binding. I normally make when I got into bias binding, I've made it. But I found this in my little bias binding basket, and it's this really silky stuff, and it it doesn't fold by much. It only folds over a tiny, tiny bit, and it's very thin. But it's pink satin. Now I think I've bought this from Hobbycraft for a project, and then didn't end up using it. I've used something else. So I had that, and I thought, well. It's not not a bad match with this really. So I decided to do that for all this, but it is quite tiny tiny. So when you fold it in half, you can see it's really, really delicate. So it was quite a tricky thing to do, but I did it. So but actually it was kind of well worth the effort because like you can't really see there. Um, but it just looks so dainty and petite, that little edge all the way around. Like I think it's the kind of bias binding you would probably sew on your garment and then fold all of it inside your garment. So say it was on here and then you'd sew it on the inside so you wouldn't see it at all. It would just be like an edge. I think that's why it's that thin. But um, I wasn't able to do that because it was for the straps. So you had to use a binding that uh, folded in half. And it actually didn't look a bad match with this binding I put on here. So I've made a bit of, I made a, bit of a hash of it, didn't I? But I've managed to sort it out. And because I'm not overly keen on this fabric, um, I wasn't too fussed about it really. But actually... I look it, it is a, I've tried it on it's a lovely fit um so I, I haven't made the shorts yet so when I've hemmed this and I've made the shorts uh, that's when I'll I'll, uh, I'll probably bring another video pretty quick actually even if it's just that so I'm sorry if it ends up just being that and it's a bit boring it's not what you want to see but I've got to do it because I've said I'll go in this blog hop and I've just got to make sure I'm doing everything right and and what if I, oh, I have another sip sorry so that's that so now I'm gonna do the boxing on ritual so I'm sorry Hayley if you watched it oh I thought someone was here then uh, watching this and you wanted to see your unboxing I'm sorry uh, is there something else that isn't there is something else that isn't unboxing um, do you know what I'll show you those at the very end you know what I'm glad I spotted them actually so here we go actually i'm really disappointed i bought a magazine a long time ago and you could crochet sooty the teddy bear and he was a favorite of mine in childhood oh, i don't need scissors to open that. and um and, and you got all the things you needed for it and and I, in all honesty i'm kind of get, becoming a bit of a yarn snob I'm, you know, I am becoming a bit one of those actually, it's terrible. And I thought, well, maybe I'll get different yarn. But at least the eyes were in it. Well, actually, the eyes wasn't in it. And I know magazines are really good if you contact them and say, oh, they're not in the cinema. But it's been such a long time. Like, I don't know when the magazine was. I think like, it's too late now. So here we go. This is exciting. This is a subscription box that I have every month. And the, I had it to encourage me to do more dressmaking. And it has. And I've been introduced to individual pattern designers, TV programmes I wouldn't have watched. I've, I've told Hayley all of this. She's done a lot for me. And actually, I've not said this to Hayley. Um, when I was in primary school, I had a best friend and she had curly hair and she was taller than me and I, oh, I, and she, I, I just loved her, I really loved her, right? 
and uh, and even though Haley, uh, she's like younger than I am, she uh, she reminds me of my best best friend in primary school. So I feel I can't help but feel this warmthness towards her because she's just so much. She just reminds me of her in the ways and the skin colouring and stuff. So uh, yeah, I just can't help it. So anyway, so this is the box. It always comes with, I've really not, I've not touched this look. It comes with tissue and a little sticker. Like I'm, I'm hoping I can probably save one of these stickers. So I can actually stick it somewhere, but no, the tissue, it's stuck to the tissue. I might ask, ask Hayley, could you please one month send me a sticker that's still on this thing so I can stick it somewhere. Cause I'd like, I've got a pin collection, I'd like a sticker collection as well. But actually that book that I showed you from my last one, um, I've actually, do you know that sewing theme book, um, from, I think it was from the Crafty So-and-so, was it, uh, in my So Holly Joe, but I've used that and I've put a sticker in it, so I, I might, I might be really geek and have a sticker book, so that's, just, that's all I've put in it so far, it's a sticker, so, you know, watch this space, big geek here, oh gosh, there is something edible, I can see that already, so here we go, so with this is issue 16, and the picture on it is lots of little leaves, green leaves. I, don't, I think because of my lights that I have on here, so you can actually see what I'm doing. Yeah, I'll have the lights on so you can see what I'm doing, and you can't see nothing. Can you, can you kind of see? There's green leaves on it. And the theme is Back to Nature, March 2020. Now, I don't tend to go through... Um, this magazine in, in front of you, Hayley is in it again. I'm just gonna quickly, and and if you saw, and I don't know if I showed you this fabric, I don't think I showed you this fabric, this fabric I've received before, and somebody has made a dress with it. So I, and actually the fabric that I received last time that I showed you, um, someone, Gemma and Laura made two very different garments. So who, I don't, but this is Gemma, she's made a top with that if you watch my video from last month when i did an unboxing so how you doing unboxing you'll see the fabric and um and here's laura on here she's made that as well um i think laura's not been very well as well ah and actually uh, another girl has made something with the red oh and uh, basically all these makes i'm seeing these are fabrics i've received and they're yeah and they're so here we go yeah so i don't i don't know if it says anything about the fact it might say something about the fabric received this time i'm not quite sure but i'll read that you don't want to sit there watching me read something do you so here we go so here we have an edible item that i i love sweeties i love sweet i really do i think i've got it from my mother i've got a sweet tooth and actually i lost most of my baby teeth in refresher bar I'd eat them and come out and my teeth would be in it, that's how bad. And I think I was the youngest child in my primary school. This obviously isn't something to be proud of, is it? To have a filling. I think I was six and I had a filling. And that's horrifying, isn't it? Really, that's really horrifying. So I was determined that I wouldn't buy my boys sweets when they were tiny. Um, I. I basically, I'd let them eat sweets if someone else bought them. I wasn't that mother, oh no, you can't have this, but I wouldn't buy them. So, and I've really, and because I ended up being a dental nurse, I kind of know when and when you shouldn't have things. So I tried to give them like, you know, the sweeter things, like a, like a sweeter drink if it was a meal time, but not in between and all that kind of thing. So uh, it probably did a, me a favor that I got, uh, into uh, dentistry actually so uh so yay <laughs> i've got i've got a lolly but oh god i'm dying it's a shame it's not a lucky i could do with a lucky really at the minute not a lolly but um i've got some lovely thread that's um 
Gutterman polyester thread, 100% polyester, and it's number 74. And you always get a coordinating thread to go with the fabric, so I'm guessing it's that kind of colour. So you get in the, I have the classic box, and you get, I made a mistake last time, if you have the mini box, you get three fat quarters. Classic box that I have, you get four, and the luxury box, you get five. So, oh gosh. They're really delightful, really delightful. Oh my goodness! And we, we've what I've just shown you as well. You'll really get this. Look, there's bees and beehives. Oh, I love that. Oh, oh my goodness! And look, this is really, really beautiful. It looks like a wild meadow. Oh. Like, I don't know if that looks as beautiful as it does seeing it by eye because there's some lighter bits that you they're not showing up on there. But oh, to see firsthand with your eyes, it's like, oh my goodness, look! And Winnie the Pooh would be in his element, wouldn't he? Oh my goodness, oh, that, that is really nice. And oh gosh, be high. Oh, I really love that. Oh gosh, I, d I don't know what I'm, I, I'm, I would, I'm going to make. Nothing has sprung to mind, but I definitely would be making something. And I'd probably, that I can see me using that in the summer, because I think this time of year, we're not quite there, are we? And we've got the Easter. So get Easter out the way, and I start to think, oh, you know, bees and things. So. There's two little bags, so let's have a look what's in here. I'm quite intrigued actually. Oh, okay, so these, these are useful. It's basically a chalk marker. If you're dressmaking and you need to make little marks, these are great, they're really sharp and precise to get your lines. And they just, you know, brush away, sponge it away, you know, and off it goes. So, uh, I do own a box of those, so those will be going in my box. So, yeah, so that's very And it's nice, the colour, um, you know, a bit, you know, it can be a bit drab, can't it, this time of year? Uh, and depressing, especially like with everybody. Ill. Like, I've had this virus for weeks now. And my nan isn't very well. And her, and her husband isn't very well. And I want to see them, but I just don't want... I'm be blowing my nose. I'm just totally... You know, I'm eating things. My nose is dripping. My throat is dry. And, oh, so I don't, I don't want to pass that on because my, my nanny and, and her husband, they're in their 90s. And it's just... It's not fair, is it? So, um, oh, lovely. So, you know I'm, I'm a button girl. And these buttons are exactly the same colour as the thread and they look like they match the fabric. So look, now this fabric, I'll be really interested to see what the composition of this fabric is because I'm not very knowledgeable when it comes to all dressmaking fabrics and I haven't sewn with all kinds of fabrics. So I would say this is like a linen because I've done uh, red work with linen and this feels very linen like and um deck chair does spring to mind it does but, but I love deck chair and nautical and all that kind of thing so and this is it I love I love that kind of look and stripes and things so that is really lovely I, I could imagine I'm not really a dress kind of person all that much, really. Um, actually, if you've read my WordPress blog, you'll realise I'd, I'd bought 25 coat hangers that hang up shorts, and, um, and I'd filled the 25 with shorts, and I didn't have enough. I didn't have enough of the, all my handmade shorts that I've made. And I've actually realised, I've looked at all the garments that I've made. Do you know, I've... I've actually made more shorts, uh, different styles than I have in anything, more than dresses and tops. 
So I really think I need to concentrate more on making tops for myself to go with all the shorts I wear. And uh, but with this dress, it does spring to mind. And I can't, and something, you know, I'm very, and as well, when I do wear dress kind of things, kind of things, I'm very much like, even though you might have seen my Halloween dress, and that was box pleat and quite, the bodice was fitted, and that, and um, and I did a block box pleat skirt bit, but I'm very body calm, I like kind of fitted, that kind of, you know, the kind of thing that fits me, it's either going to be to the, to quite fitted to the floor, or it's going to be short, I don't, I don't kind of look right with that in between, but this kind of screams to me dress and something that's got a bit of to it. So yeah, that's really lovely. So, uh, um, so actually, when you're talking about being pushed out your comfort zone, having these boxes pro kind of probably does that, doesn't it? Because um, that they, I'm sent fabric, and maybe I wouldn't have gone and bought it. Not saying I don't like it, but it's made, made me think, oh you know so it's kind of experiment a little bit so um so that's that's my unboxing and Hayley thank you very much I'm really pleased I'm always really pleased with them and this is delightful and especially with this dreary weather that has really cheered me right up because we've got a lot we've got even though we've had an exciting weekend for my son's birthday um, there's a you know a lot. Of, my nan's been unwell. Husband's been unwell. I've had uncles that are unwell, and uh, and it, it is quite depressing, isn't it? And um, so it's nice to have a bit of cheerfulness in your life. So now you know the daffodils are coming through, and actually. Um, I never discovered um, snowdrops until I was a dog owner as an adult, seeing them over the parks and things. And I've actually, uh, I was asking some uh, snowdrop, um, uh, you know, the flower snowdrops a guru, uh, Ro Rosemary, I think Rosemary of Warwick she's called. She's really helpful. She told me, don't get bulbs, just get a ready-made flower. So I did buy a ready-made one, in a, a ready-grown one in a pot that hadn't flowered. Some of them had flowered. And uh, I've bought the pot home, I've got it out the front, and uh, I've just left it, and it's flowered now, and it looks lovely, but I just don't know where to plant it. I just really don't know, because we're going to be changing things at the back and changing things at the front. I don't want to put it somewhere, and it's going to be no good, so I don't know, I don't know where I'm going to put it yet, so hopefully it's not too late because it's flowered, but... Uh, yeah, but that's beautiful. So, um, yeah, so, you know, it's feeling a bit more cheerful with nature, isn't it? When you've got, like, you know, daffodils popping up and, you know, and the snowdrops have. And, and I don't know what those, they're not, um, not tulips. Uh, I know they come after, but um, do you know those other ones? They look a little bit like tulips, but they're really small. And they plant them in circles. Like, I don't know if this is... This is a thing I think um, my town solely Hall did, the council, in grassy areas and on islands. They did these circle of them and I don't know what they are, but it just makes me think of childhood. And I don't know what they are, but they're popping up. So there is a change. And like um, Sunday when it was my son's party, uh, it was actually a bit milder. I went out in a t-shirt, jeans, my cardigan and open toe shoes and I know I wasn't spending time outside as such, I was just in and out of places but the sun was shining and I was definitely warm enough and there was loads of dog walkers everywhere where we drove around, people running everywhere and the place where we go trampolining, you go down this bit of an industrial estate, down the back of an industrial estate, it's not, it, you could think oh it's a bit grim but there's a canal running all along, you're in a road and you're right next to a canal leading down to it and then, then even the birds, oh, the, oh, it was just lovely. And the sun was shining. It was really nice. So it's really, you know, I'm trying not to get too excited because usually the weather doesn't pick up, does it, to the end of March. So um, we can't get too excited. And still, you know, you could get snow at Easter, couldn't you? But, um, but yeah, it, it is starting to change, isn't it? Now, the two things I'm going to show you and then I'm going to let you go. And I'm going to ha probably have another drink and have my lollipop, actually. I've just got to check the time. 
um, yes, I've got to go. So, um, but here is my. Uh, this is an. Uh, these are ironing fingers. This is a stiletto and an ironing finger. And basically, you can use this to push things right under the needle, and not get too close. And this, it's so you can iron and push things in, and you're not going to burn yourself. And those are both by Clover. One's called an iron finger and one's called a hold it precision stiletto. I know that was quick, but uh, mate, if you want more info, I'll tell you next time. But thank you so much for watching. I'm going to quickly grab Rafe because he's, he's so happy. He's got this thing in here and he's, uh, he's not been bothered. Oh, I've made it. Oh, where is it, Rafe? Oh, here it is. Uh, he's so into this. He's not even been bothered about coming out. But yeah, so here's Rafe. He was here the whole time, but been as good as gold. So thank you so much for watching. And I'm guessing the next time I see you is probably going to be my blog hop where I'll have, I'll have finished this. I'm talking a bit about that and it will probably be appealing to dressmakers. If there's other things I've made, I will bring them along, but uh, we'll just see what's happened. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye.